Hi folks, shop update. We are getting really excited for IMTS. I wanna go learn more about Lays. I also wanna go learn even more about Fifth Axis. It's not now just the machines, it's kind of like what does that workflow uh, look like? So we've had uh, our Trunnion, we've already put out the Arduino video, we've got a turbo fan type blade video coming out any day. We made a engine block, we made some Johnny Five parts, like it's been phenomenal to really understand and learn it. The last thing that we did uh, was we got this Pearson Roto Vice uh, from Jay Pearson, and so this is incredibly simple yet amazing. It's a vice that holds four parts around it. And the idea here that we were testing as a proof of concept is could we hold four of our parts? We did this with mod vices and then we had some fun with just a V8 engine. Um, but the benefit here is you've got positional axis location, more so than simultaneous fives. You've got the part oriented on its side, then you can reorient it at the certain angles to do your drilled holes. You can tip it all the way over. And now you've got access to not only the part that would be here, but also the side edges here. The idea is a one and done workflow for not only prototyping parts, maybe four of them, but production. For us, for our mod vices, we do those in four setups and we could get that down to two setups, but really all the critical work is done in one setup, which really can help increase your productivity. It means you're doing QC after that one step and you're good to go. Like seriously, at this point, that sort of thing is a huge relief. So. I don't know what it means yet. Do we go with this sort of a Pearson system on tombstones with automation? Do you just need to have two so that one's being offloaded, uh, offline loaded while the other one's running? Are there other systems? Like that's what we want to go learn. But this thing has been insanely stable and strong, even on a, a Trunnion, which isn't maybe quite as good as a dedicated five axis machine. Um, and being able to do it gives me that confidence to go look at machines and kind of understand what questions I need to ask and what are we going to do. We just finished up two new sets of fixtures. We are doing a ModVice soft jaw system, which I'm really excited about. We've got steel fingers that slip into the mod vices, and then on top of it, we use these aluminum semi-sacrificial soft jaws. We call them top jaws. To me, this makes so much sense because this is so much smaller than a huge soft jaw that normally we don't need. So for now, we're running these on the, uh, actually on the Pearson uh, Pro Palette system. Op one will be the saw cut material held between a talon grip and a pit bull. We'll be able to do all the work on the top and across the sides. Then we can take that part, flip it over here. It locates on this diamond pin that we machined in. A Uniforce holds two of them. And we'll be able to do the final machining of the backside uh, as well as clean up these two edges. On the Pearson the way we like to do these Pearson Palace, we do steel inserts for the talon grips. That lets us adjust them if we need to. It's also just way stronger than the aluminum. Um, and we do our probing on the pallet itself, just the way we've always preferred to do it. We find that if you go to having two or three or more of these, each fixture has its own little characteristic. So I want them dated, serialized, and with their own uh, ability to probe in offsets. Daniel, our summer intern, is working on a shift lever project with Scott Moist. I think this is for an Evo car, is that a Mitsubishi, like a rally car? Uh, but it's pretty cool. We're, uh, we're turning and then we've got a, I think it's a pretty good setup that he came up with of using some parallels to lift it up to get it underneath this jack along with a 246 block and holding it apart. And then we're doing some fake knurling with a pretty cool uh, trick in fusion uh, with a parallel tool path. So we'll have a video coming out on that where we show um, how you can make something like that. I think we got the spindle figured out for the DIY lathe. Uh, we got our butt kicked the first few times. There's just some critical tolerances that you've got to hold, uh, I, but we think we got it. So now we're just turning some other parts for that whole spindle assembly. And if so, that's gonna be a key next step to get that DIY CNC lathe working. And speaking of DIY CNC, this is Ed's personal project, but he's using a used granite plate as the base for a uh, homemade router. And he's using a really, really old uh, lathe bed as the cross slide. So he'll, I think he's gonna document some more of this, but what was awesome was, and this is absolutely one of the uh, most homemade things I've ever seen, but this is too long a travel for our surface grinder. So he tipped this up in a vise and ground this in across its length within half a thousandth of an inch. It ended up working out super well. So I think we're gonna, he's got some improvements in mind and we're gonna kind of go to make a video on 
on how you could do this because it's a phenomenal answer if you need something flat and you don't own a surface grinder or you don't own a big enough surface grinder. Obviously, gotta be safe though. Last thing, and this, this is turning out super cool. We originally did this V8 engine block. It's an LS3, right? Yes. Just as a, can we make it, learn on the five axis. Alex has really taken it to the next step. More machined parts. We also printed some on the Mark Forge. Um, when we are done with this, no, it won't work as an actual combustion engine, but we printed the crank. We've got the connecting rods attached to printed pistons, and it's a little tricky to actuate with one hand, but we should be able to get this actually uh, simulating functionality. And that has me thinking, let's take this to the next step. This was just meant to be for fun. So let's take the next step. We're gonna try simplifying some designs and seeing if we can come up with some actual combustion engine. You can do it off of gas or what was it? Um, ethanol. ethanol. So stay tuned, but this is fun folks. Almost forgot, we are done, knock on wood. We are done with the injection mold. Ed's got some final parts to come in. We wanna kind of test fit it here. We're sending it off to a guy in Utah who's got a machine who's gonna run the parts for us. I am super nervous that we may have done something wrong that we don't know about. Um, holding individual tolerances hasn't been too difficult, but you've got all these plates stacking up together. So we've filmed a ton. We're gonna do a whole series showing some of the lessons that we learned, um, doing the detailed engraving, some reaming. Um, shout out to Harvey Tools. They helped us out with some speeds and feeds and some really small tooling uh, that has worked great. Um, and here you can actually see the main part of the a fixture plate plug mold. These are the ejection pins and this is where the plastic will flow in. We cut these with five axis, uh, positional five axis to get those submarine type gates in for the plastic to flow. Really been one of the most enjoyable things I've made, even if it has been a little bit stressful uh, on some of the parts. And we, it's the first time we've ever bumped our Haas into the part. It, machine is fine, thankfully, but nevertheless been a fun experience. Take care folks. See you soon.